Hi, this week I want to give you another one of my author and book recommendations for you to consider. I didn't grow up in the church. Uh, I only became a Christian when I was in high school, and I only started taking my faith seriously once I'd already gotten into college. And so while I had a, a little bit of some kind of informal influences, it wasn't like from my early age. And so mostly, if you boil down, there's really kind of two major theological influences in my life. One of them is John Wesley, and that makes a certain amount of sense because I'm a United Methodist pastor. But the second one, and perhaps the one that actually sticks out the most, uh, is Thomas F. Torrance. And the fact of the matter is, I have a bookshelf, like a whole shelf of that's just stuffed full of Torrance's books, and I could recommend any one of them to you, but I'm going to try to stick to one, uh, The Mediation of Christ, uh, just because it's a pretty good way to kind of dive into it if you've never read Torrance before. So who is T.F. Torrance? Uh, T.F. Torrance was a Scottish Reformed theologian who was born on the mission field in mainland China in 1913, and he died at the end of 2007. He was raised by his missionary parents, and he always wanted to be a missionary, but he kind of almost by accident, it seems, became an academic theologian instead, although it might be argued that, in fact, he always was a missionary of some kind. He served as a chaplain in World War II, and he held the chair in Christian dogmatics at the University of Edinburgh for about 27 years, and he shaped and formed a huge number of theologians and church leaders. Torrance wrote on a variety of topics, uh, but I have tended to kind of divide them up into three major strands. Uh, one of them is when he writes on uh, Christology and Trinitarian theology. Uh, the second one is when he writes on science and epistemology, or how it is that we come to know what we know. And the third one is historical engagements with previous thinkers in one way or another. And like any kind of division, that is a bit oversimplistic, uh, but I found it's a pretty good place to start with, considering he wrote over 650 books and articles over the course of his life. I first got into Torrance uh, at the University of Dubuque Theological Seminary through a professor there named Elmer Collier. And if you're in the Iowa United Methodist Church, you may have heard his name before from one of your pastors because he has had a significant impact on a whole bunch of pastors over the last several decades. But in any case, uh, my, before I started reading Torrance's own writings, uh, I found myself reading Alistair McGrath's intellectual biography of Torrance. And, and in there, I read something that made me know for sure at that moment uh, that Torrance was going to be a significant impact in my life. The story goes that uh, Torrance had been teaching for about a year at a seminary in upstate New York. And, the, and Princeton University was in the process of developing the first, in America anyway, Department of Religious Studies. So not a school of religion, uh, not a seminary, but a Department of Religious Studies. And Torrance was one of the folks who applied to teach there in that first one in America. And one of the things he was told, according to the story, is that um, he was going to have students who were from all kinds of faith traditions and maybe uh, no faith at all. And so it was very important that he was sensitive to that and that there must be no conversions in his classroom. And Torrance responded by saying, my intention is to teach Christian faith as a science where we don't think how we choose to think. We think as we're compelled to think because of the evidence that we have. And if I teach Christian theology that way, he said, I cannot guarantee that there will be no conversions. Now, he walked away from that interview assuming that he wouldn't get the job, but they did offer it to him. But for one reason or another, he ended up going back to uh, Scotland before uh, World War II really got underway. The thing is, the moment I read that story, the I said, said, this is going to be something that's going to play a major role in my life. This thinker is somebody who I can get behind. That's his attitude about Christian faith. When I started reading Torrance for myself, I found myself amazed that it was like every page that I was reading, I found he was giving answers to questions that I didn't even know that I had. But once I read what he had to say about them, I realized that not only had I had those questions for a long time, I had uh, kind of trained myself not to ask them. It was as if I'd picked up on subtle clues in my experience in the church that there are certain topics that you're not supposed to ask, certain things you're not supposed to raise uh, for consideration. But in any case, one of the things the early on that I noticed is that he not only explained to me uh, what was declared heretical in the church, early church, but he also explained why it was declared heretical. And he did so in a way that was organic and it was all of a piece. And it began to make sense out of all these things I had learned throughout history and other theological studies uh, in a way that helped bring it clarity in my own mind. Also, and perhaps most importantly, he helped me to understand much more fully what it means to have Jesus be the center of all of our life and all of our thinking about God. My interest in Torrance's thought grew and intensified when I got into his more scientific works. Because, you see, I had a background in mathematics. I was a pure mathematics major in college, but I didn't have as strong of a background in the actual sciences as perhaps I should have. 
And one of the things that I found was that when I was reading what he had to say, he was drawing on these major advances in science, especially physics and philosophy of science over the 20th century. And I found myself really interested and encouraged to get up to speed and find out what he was saying and what everybody else was saying. And the fascinating part about it is that that got me so excited and I got so excited about what Torrance was saying, but also particularly how he engaged with and navigated through the philosophy of science in a way that took advantage of some of its greatest insights, but also was able to avoid some of its major pitfalls, that uh, that actually became the core of my PhD work, which resulted in this book. But this isn't a recommendation for this book. Stick with Torrance. One more general note about reading Torrance is that uh, people have said that he can be very dense and a little bit hard to digest. But at the same time, uh, just as many other people I've talked to have found that when they read him, they know, oh yeah, we, I realize that it's intense. I realize that it's, that it's deep and dense, but have just eaten it up and can't wait for more and have gone from book to book just wanting to get more of that and have reread his book several times because every time uh, they do that they find that there's more to learn and more to connect together in their head something that they had heard the first time but didn't fully understand the depths of until they read it two or three more times it is a fascinating uh, experience with Torrance that I have not had really with any other theologian in my experience so with all that said, I want to direct your attention specifically to his book, The Mediation of Christ. And if you want to pick this up, try to make sure you get the revised edition from 1992 and not the, the other version from the 80s. Because the revised edition has a fifth chapter and it's on uh, the atonement and the Holy Trinity that is absolutely worth having. How can I describe my experience uh, reading The Mediation of Christ for the first time? Uh, the fact of the matter is it was assigned as a text to be read in my, one of my seminary classes, but unlike so many readings uh, from seminary, it didn't have that kind of dry quality where you kind of go, okay, I know I have to read this, I know I have to learn it for a test. It was clearly written by someone who finds the topic absolutely fascinating and invigorating and wants you and everybody who reads it to understand just how important Jesus is and how exciting it is to follow him. The book is more or less dealing with this question about what does it mean for Jesus to be the divine human mediator uh, to us. And uh, so the chapters involve, you know, how does God mediate revelation to us, how God mediates reconciliation to us, what it means for Jesus Christ to be the mediator in his very self, and also what does that mean for how we think about God and also how we have our human response to the gospel. The book also deals with the question of what is the role of Israel in the works of God, both uh, in times past, but also still in today's time and also into the future. And I must admit, I had never really given it a lot of thought, and it really hadn't made a whole lot of sense to me until I was reading uh, this book in particular. The fact of the matter is that this book uh, is very interesting and worth reading for any of those topics, but the fact of the matter is I am generally against this idea of mercenary reading, where you have a thing that you already want to learn, you know what it is you want to learn, and you read a book specifically to address that particular thing. I think you should read this book even if you aren't particularly interested in the question of the mediation of Christ or the role of Israel in the life of, of the Christians and the work of God, because it's the kind of book that has absolutely reshaped the way that I think. It's a great introduction to one of the most exciting and interesting interesting theologians I've ever read in my entire life. My biggest hope is that you will read this book and you will begin to catch a bit of the passion that Torrance clearly has for the gospel. It's hard to put into words the way Torrance's thinking and writing can transform somebody. I know that myself, uh, speaking for myself, I am much different than I would have been if I had never encountered uh, Torrance's writings. It has changed my life and it has changed the way that I think. I don't want to put too fine a point on it, but if you have ever found anything that I have to say interesting or stimulating, the fact of the matter is it is overwhelmingly because of the impact that Torrance has had on my life and on my thinking and preaching and teaching. The fact of the matter is I'm not really that creative. I don't really have that much of my own to offer. Uh, aside from what I've picked up from, from John Wesley and from the Bible itself, everything I have to offer that's, from, that's of any kind of value has come to me through T.F. Torrance uh, and that kind of exploration that he has uh, lit a passion inside of me. So do yourself a favor. Pick up a copy. Find a copy of this book, The Mediation of Christ, and read it. And when you finish it, go and find another book by T.F. Torrance and read that. And keep reading until you run out of the books that you can find to read. You will uh, absolutely not be let down. It is worth your time. Please engage with it. And I promise you that if you engage in it faithfully, you will find your life changed. Well, that's all I have for this week. If you have liked or been in, in, interested by these videos, please consider liking and sharing them on Facebook. You can also follow uh, the YouTube page that these are posted on, which is YouTube slash TSteveIg1. If you have any questions or if you have any topics you'd like me to take up, please send me an email at pastorstevig at gmail.com. I look forward to seeing you next time.